Assalamualaikum, I am Widi Mutakin, founder of Expo Studio, Expo Academy, and Edu Talenta. The design and build industry, including construction, architecture, interior, and landscape, continues to evolve. One of which we can experience is the software. In this video, I want to discuss the most commonly used or popular software in the design industry, especially the architecture and interior design. Please note that I made this video in early 2025, so what I am about to explain here may only be relevant in 2025. Currently, the software used for architecture and interiors can be grouped into seven categories. They are 2D drafting, 3D design, real-time rendering, 3D visualization, high-quality rendering, post-production, and the last one is BIM. Let's discuss each of these categories one by one. The first is the 2D drafting category, or commonly known as CAD. We use software in this category to replace drawing by hand or with a drafting table. There are many software that we can use, but the most popular is AutoCAD. The second category is 3D design. Basically, software in this category is also used as a replacement for hand drawing or sketching. But instead of drawing in two dimensions, we draw the design directly in 3D. Currently, the most popular 3D design software is SketchUp. The next category of software is real-time rendering. This type of software can render very quickly with a quality that is considered sufficient. In case you are wondering what rendering means, in short, rendering is a visual computing process that turns our design work into images or videos that look more realistic or at least more representative. Unlike movies or animations which require high quality and or photorealistic results, most architectural projects only use 3D renderings to communicate the shape of the building and its materials to the client. For this reason, many designers choose to use real-time rendering software. Some popular examples include Enscape, Lumion, D5 Render, and Vantage. Once the design project progresses to the marketing stage, it generally requires more photorealistic and higher quality rendering results. This is where the limitations of 3D design and real-time rendering software become apparent. For this specific purpose, many professionals turn to software in the 3D visualization category. Essentially, they are 3D DCC or digital content creation software that have richer or more complete 3D features. The most commonly used software by many Archfish studios today is 3ds Max. Unfortunately, 3ds Max itself does not have a reliable rendering engine. That is why most 3ds Max users must also use additional rendering software which falls into the high-quality rendering category. The software can perform photorealistic rendering even though it takes a little longer than the real-time rendering category. Currently, the most popular ones are V-Ray and Corona. The result of a rendering process can be an image or it can also be a video. Unfortunately, oftentimes, these images or videos still do not meet our quality standards or our artistic vision. Essentially, we still need to process them again using software that fall into the next category, post-production. For image processing, the most popular and oldest one is Adobe Photoshop. As for video editing, the most popular software is Premiere Pro for Windows platforms and Final Cut Pro for Apple Mac platforms. The last category is BIM, which stands for Building Information Modeling. So what exactly is BIM? Simply put, BIM is an approach to the building design process where all the data is stored inside a single file. So, the 3D shape of the building, information on building materials, technical drawings such as plans, elevations, and sections, then scheduling, costing, structural analysis, and so on, 
are all contained in one file. This is very different from conventional workflows where the data of a building is scattered in different offline locations held by many different parties and in various software formats. With BIM, a building's project data is centralized in just one place. Each party involved can open the file simultaneously without interrupting the other's work. This allows for more effective and efficient collaboration. There are many BIM software in the market, but the most popular ones are Revit and ArchiCAD. The most common problem faced by the design industry is the high price of software subscriptions. Suppose you are an architect or interior designer who uses all the seven categories of software. First, you have to pay for an AutoCAD subscription at $175 per month, then SketchUp at $49.99 per month, Enscape subscription at $76.9 per month, then to this max at $155 per month, then V-Ray at $55.9 per month, Adobe Creative Cloud subscription to be able to use Photoshop and Premiere Pro for $89.99 per month, and finally Autodesk Revit subscription at $235 per month. The total cost you have to pay per month is $836.78. For many people in the world, this is a huge amount of money to pay each month. Imagine that you run an architectural firm with 10 staff of architects all using the 7 software. In one year, your company will have to pay more than $100k just for software licenses. If you are wealthy, or your company can afford to pay for all the software licenses, then that is totally fine. Feel free to continue using the software if it makes sense from the business perspective. By paying for the software license, you are supporting the company and the people behind the software to continue to exist and innovate. The problem is that some professionals and even companies prefer to cut corners. What do they do? They use crack or pirated software. They shamelessly use the high price of the software as a justification for using the pirated versions. A survey at the end of 2024 showed that China, Russia, America, and India are the four top countries using pirated software. And my country, Indonesia, was ranked 15th, which is not something I am proud of. If you are a Muslim and you are still using pirated software, please know that Islam forbids the use of pirated software. Lajna Daima, or the International Council of Scholars based in Saudi Arabia, has issued two fatwas of the haram of pirated software, namely Fatwa Numbers 18453 and 18845. Using pirated software is also against the laws of all countries in the world. For example, in my country, Indonesia, it is against the copyright law number 28 of 2014. So, what is the solution? If we cannot afford or don't want to pay the price of the software, then the best solution is to use open source and or free software instead, or at least use cheaper alternative software that does not require us to pay a subscription. Here, I would like to propose a solution to even better alternatives to all the above subscription software. The first solution is to use Blender for all our 3D needs. Blender is a 3D DCC software that is open source. So, you can use it as freely as possible without having to spend a dime. You are encouraged to donate, but there is no compulsion if you still cannot afford it. Perhaps because Blender is free, many people don't take it seriously. Basically, they just don't know or realize what Blender is capable of and assume that Blender is still the same as it was 10 or 20 years ago. You should know that Blender is not the standard software in a 3D industry. If you need proof, just open Google Trends 
and compare all the popular 3D software over the last 10 years. As you can see for yourself, 2DS Max, Maya, Cinema 4D are all in free fall. Currently, even if we combine the trend scores of the 3D software together, it is no more than a third of Blender's trend score. This condition is very serious for Autodesk, the company behind 3ds Max, Maya, and AutoCAD software, to the point that they had to lay off 1,350 of their employees in the first quarter of 2025. As for SketchUp, it has also experienced stagnation and slight decline since 2011. Currently, SketchUp's position is only two-thirds compared to Blender's trend. If you compare feature for feature, no 2D software can beat the number of features that Blender can offer. By mastering Blender alone, you can indirectly replace three categories of architectural software at once, even up to four. What are they? First, you can use Blender to design directly in 3D, so it can replace the position of SketchUp. Second, Blender's full 3D capabilities as a DCC or digital content creation can easily replace 3ds Max in the 3D visualization category. And third, Blender's default rendering engine called Cycles is currently the fastest path tracer that can replace V-Ray or Corona. What makes Blender more interesting is the existence of Bonsai. Bonsai is a free and open source add-on for Blender that allows you to create and edit IFC files. For your information, IFC is an open standard for BIM that is supported by almost all BIM software in the world. Bonsai supports IFC natively. This means full support without any compromise. So it's different from some paid BIM software where there are still compromises here and there in terms of IFC standard implementation. When you create a building project with Bonsai, the resulting IFC file can be fully opened by any BIM viewer or editor. For example, you can open and edit the IFC file in FreeCAD, save it, and then reopen it in Bonsai without any problems. Next, for the 2D drafting category, you can use QCAD. It should be noted that CubeCAD is a pure 2D software, so it is different compared to the full variant of AutoCAD which allows you to create 3D models. But honestly, for architecture nowadays, hardly anyone uses AutoCAD to create 3D models of buildings. This functionality has long been replaced by SketchUp and or Revit. Nowadays, most architects use AutoCAD only for its 2D drafting capabilities. Like Blender, QCAD is also open source, so you can use it without having to pay any fees. If you need more advanced features, QCAD is also available in a pro version, which has a perpetual license or one-time purchase at a very affordable price. The next category is real-time rendering. For this, you can use Unreal Engine to replace Enscape, Lumion, Vintage, and the like. Yes, Unreal Engine is not totally free. It uses a royalty profit sharing system of 5%, but only for people or companies that have been able to generate $1 million per year. Below that number, Unreal Engine is completely free. Honestly, if you can make $1 million a year, you are already a rich person. It will be very easy for you to pay a 5% royalty. So, no matter how you look at it, I still consider Unreal Engine to be a free software. The strength of Unreal Engine is its rendering quality. Of all real-time renderers, Unreal Engine can produce the best quality and also the fastest when you need to render animations. Last category is post-production. Instead of using Photoshop, you can use Krita. Krita is originally an open source software for digital painting, but it also has image editing features that are not inferior to Photoshop. As for video editing, instead of using Premiere Pro, you can use CapCut. CapCut is not an open source software. 
but it is available in a free version. The point is, for architectural presentation needs, Krita and a free version of CapCut are more than enough. So, those are the seven categories of software used in architecture, the popular software, and also the open source and or free alternatives. If you want to learn more about this alternative software, I am currently developing a complete program for mastering open source architecture and interior design software. You'll be able to learn workflow from end to end, including 3D modeling, visualization, animation, post-production, 2D technical drawings, and BIM. For more information, please check out the link in the description. I hope this video is useful. Wassalamualaikum.